Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve network delay time. The reason I'm solving this problem is because it's a rare problem that you actually have to use a Jixtra's, however you pronounce that name, this algorithm. It's the shortest path algorithm. It's not super common on leak code, but I think it's a really cool problem to solve, a cool algorithm to implement. So obviously this is a graph problem. We're given a network of n nodes labeled from one to n, and we're also given a list of times. The times are going to be our edges. So it's going to be directed edges. So a time is a triple value. The first value in this triple is going to be the source node. So for example, this node two, the second node, the second value is going to be the target node. So for example, one is this node. And the reason it's a target is we can see that there is an outgoing edge going from two to the one. So every edge is going to be directed, right? We can see there's a directed edge there, a directed edge here. The third value, and this is also pretty important for this algorithm, is the weight of the edge. In the context of this problem, the one basically just means the amount of time it's going to take for us to go from here to this node, right? But this is the weight of the edge. So we're given a original node K. So this is our starting point. The node K is going to be the starting point. So for example, in this problem, in this in this graph, we're given k equals two. That means this is the starting point for us. What, we're, what we wanna do in this problem is starting at two, how long would it take for us to visit every single node? Basically, if we, if we sent a signal from here in every direction, so in this direction and in this direction, how long would it take for that signal to reach every single node? Now, if it's not possible, for example, in this case, it is possible, but what if we had a fifth node over here that's just not connected to these four nodes over here? Then it would be impossible for this node to send a signal here. In that case, we're simply gonna return negative one because it's not possible. But what about in this problem because it is possible. How long is it going to take? That's the only question. Now, looking at the picture, it's pretty obvious. Starting at two, how long is it going to take for this to reach a signal? It's going to take one, right? Because the weight of the edge is one. How long is it going to take for this node to, to uh, get the signal? Also one, because the, the weight of the edge is one. So now we're over here. Let me just change the color to make it a little bit better. By the way, this was the original node. How long did it take this node to get the signal? Technically zero, right? Because it's the one sending the signal. How long did it take this three to reach the signal? One. How long did it take this to reach the signal? One. Now we're gonna continue going from this three we know that this one doesn't have any more nodes that it can send the signal to, but this three does. It has a node over here, four, right? Now, how long is it going to take this four to reach the signal? Well, the weight of the edge is one. So does that mean it's going to take the four one second or whatever our time unit is to reach this? No, because we have to add the one from over here, right? Remember, our signal first started over here, then it traveled over here with one, then it's gonna travel again over here with one. So in total, once we have visited this node, it's gonna have taken two units of time to reach it. Now, after this node reaches, uh, gets the signal, that means everybody has gotten the signal. How long did it take? What's the largest value we have? It took this one, right? This one took two seconds or whatever. So therefore we're gonna return two because after two you know, units of time, every node has received the signal. So our output value in this case is gonna be two. Now from looking at this example that we ran through, you might be able to tell that Jixtra's algorithm is actually a breadth first search algorithm that I'm gonna show you the general idea of. But the one difference about regular breadth first search is this algorithm actually uses a minimum heap AKA a priority queue. So we're gonna be needing this data structure. It's not a super common data structure, but it is, it is needed for this graph algorithm. Let me show you the actual algorithm. After that, we're gonna jump into the code. So in case you wanna Google this algorithm or do some more research, it is called Jixtra's algorithm. It is a shortest path graph algorithm, and it's pretty uh, common. You have probably learned it in school if you study CS. And what it does is in this case, let's say our source or our starting point is this node, the value one. 
What it does is for every other node, it basically tells you the shortest path, right? So for example, three, what's the length of the shortest path to this node? Well, from directly from one to three, it takes one. So one is gonna be the shortest path for this node. What about this two node? What's the shortest path to this node, right? With this, it's pretty obvious because there's only one way to get here anyway, but take a look at this node. There's two different ways to get there. Now, this is this the shortest path? It's the obvious path, right? It's just one node away, but the edge has a weight of four. That's a problem because take a look at the second path that we can do. We can go to three right over here. Then we can go to the four and then we can get to the two, right? That took three edges, didn't it? That took one edge, two edge, three edges. But when we total these values up, we get a sum of three. That means this path is actually shorter than the path up here. So it's not always clear, right? That's why we need an algorithm. And that's exactly what we have. We have Jixter's algorithm and we're going to be doing a breadth first search, right? So starting at this node, the, st the start node one, we're only going to be possibly visiting nodes that are, that are right next to our frontier, right? Depth first search would be, we just go one direction and we just keep going, right? But breadth first search is we're going to do this layer by layer, right? We're going to go to the first layer, the next layer and so on if we had a bigger graph, right? That's how breadth for search works. And every node that is on our frontier, right? So if this is our starting point, we have two options of nodes we can visit, this node or this node. These both are going, is, are going to be added to our min heap and we're only gonna visit the one with a shorter path. That does make sense so far, doesn't it? It makes sense that we would wanna visit this node because it has a shorter path path rather than visiting this node first, which has a longer path, right? That makes sense so far. That's why we're using a minimum heap. Minimum heaps can get us the minimum value pretty efficiently, right? Every time we want to get a minimum value from the min heap, it's just a log n operation. Okay, so the way we initialize this algorithm is we know that we're starting here, right? What we're going to actually do is add this node to our min heap initially, right? So, and in our min heap, we're going to be keeping track of two values, obviously the path length, right? Because we're always going to be popping from the min heap based on the minimum path, right? So that's what we're, that's like our key value. That's what we actually care about, right? That's what's going to determine which one we pop, but we also want to keep track of which node it is, right? So initially the path to reach uh, the initial node one is zero, right? Because we're that's where we're starting. So it doesn't cost us anything to get there. And the node itself is obviously one. So this is how we're going to start. Then we're going to pop this value. It's only one value so far. So it's, it's simple of where we're popping, right? Once we pop this value, what's our next step? Well, like I said, this is a breadth first search, right? So we're gonna take a look at the node over here. It's one. We're gonna look at all of its neighbors, right? It has two neighbors, right? We're checking that first layer. This we're going we're going layer by layer with breadth first search, right? So this is our first layer, right? We're gonna take the first neighbor, three. How long does it take to reach three? One. We're not visiting it yet. We're simply adding it to our min heap. So the path length is one and this is for node three then other node that we can reach is two the path length is four let's add that as well four and the node is two and since we've already visited the node one we can cross it out now so now we're popping another value this time we have two values so which one are we going to pop well this is a min heap right we're going to pop the value with the minimum path it's this one right of course that's the one with the shortest path that's what we're going to pop now so as we pop every element we're basically determining the minimum path so now we can say for sure that the minimum path to reach three takes us one right because one was the value that we added to our min heap and again, we're just doing a breadth first search. What are all of the nodes that three has neighbors with? It, it only has neighbors with one node, right? This four, we have a directed edge going exactly to four. So let's add four to our min heap. 
So we're adding the node four, right? So that's what we're gonna put in the node position. What are we gonna put in the path position? Are we just gonna put one? Because it only takes one for us to get there from three. That's not actually what we're gonna put. We're gonna take the total that it took to reach three, which was one, and it's taking us another one to reach four. So we're gonna add the total to this, right? We're not just keeping track of the single one, we're keeping track of the total path it takes for each node. We wanna know how long it takes to reach node four all the way from our starting position. We care about the starting position. So when I put the path value, uh, the path length for this node, I'm gonna put a two value. So now we are once again done with this node. So now again, we are going to decide which one are we going to pop from our min heap. We want to pop the value with a shorter path. So we're going to pop this one. So now we're at this node, right? And how many nodes can this node reach? Well, it only has a single outgoing edge to this node two, right? And we see that two has actually already been added to our min heap right? But the only difference is this time, and I'm running out of space, so I'm just going to add a little slot, is that for this two, it's how long, did, first of all, how long did it take to reach this? It took a distance of two to reach this four, and plus one means that to reach this to reach this two now, it's actually a distance of three, which is shorter than this one, right? So now we can actually add that same node two to our min heap, but this time we're gonna have a distance of three, which is shorter. So we visited this node and now you can see that we only have one node remaining to visit. Good thing for us, both of our options in the min heap lead to that node. Which one are we gonna pick? It's a min heap, so we're gonna pick this one. Three is less than four, so we're gonna pop this from our min heap. So now we finally popped the last node. It's a path length of three. So now that we've reached every single node in our array and by the way this node does not have any outgoing edges so we don't have to do anything more and we even though we do have an, a value left in our min heap once we pop it we're going to see that it's the same node that we've already visited we visited this two node and we visited every node now and, and you can see the max value that we got in terms of length is three so three is going to be our output in this case it takes three units of time or whatever for us to start at this position and then send a signal to every other node in the graph so analyzing the time complexity of this problem is actually a little more difficult than you think. So I'm gonna use E to tell us basically the number of total edges inside of our uh, graph that we're given and V for the total number of nodes or vertices that we're given. And just so you know, the maximum number of edges that we could possibly have is about proportional to the number of nodes squared because like it's just kind of how it works. So like if we had two nodes or rather three nodes, you know, there's, we could have bi-directional edges for every pair of nodes. And if you just, basically this is just something that's true and that's what I'm gonna assume. So the max size of our heap could actually be V squared, even though we have, let's say four edges, we noticed that some of the, uh, or rather we have four nodes. We notice that some of the nodes could be added into the min heap multiple times. That's dependent on the total number of edges. That's why we're saying V squared is the total number of nodes that could be in the heap. So every heap operation is possibly worst case log V squared. And how many times are we gonna be doing this operation? It's gonna be E times worst case, basically the number of edges, because for every edge is how many times we can add values to the heap, right? So, and this, and the way logs work, logarithms, if you take this two, we can actually uh, get rid of that two, put it over here, right? Put the two over here, and we know how big O complexity works. We don't care about constant values. So this two actually goes away. So the overall big O time complexity with a priority queue for uh, Jixer's algorithm is going to be E log V. This is just the general overview. Now let's get into the code. So we're actually given a list of edges and we want to create an adjacency list of that first for uh, Jixer's algorithm. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is create a dictionary or a hash map of edges. Initially, it's just going to be an empty list. So I'm going to go through every edge in the input. So for so for every edge u, I'm going to get a list of all of its uh, neighbors, right? Because we know that that's pretty useful for a Jixers algorithm. We're going to basically get every single outgoing neighbor. So V is the neighbor node and W is the weight of that node. So we're going to add that to edges uh, list for U. So this is just creating an adjacency list for us, which is going to be useful. Now I'm going to create that min heap. We remember we want to just initialize this min heap uh, with the first value and the weight of it's going to be zero because we know it doesn't cost us anything to get there and that uh, starting node is given to us as K. I'm also going to have one more data structure. It's going to be a set. Basically, it's going to keep track of all the nodes that we visited because we know we don't want to go in a cycle. We don't want to go in a loop. So we do have to sort of keep track of that. I'm also going to have a variable T for the result. Initially, it's going to be zero. Basically, the max value that we end up getting or the last node that we visit and the cost or the length to visit that node is going to be the value that we return. So now we're just going to continue our algorithm while our min heap is non-empty. We're going to keep popping from our heap while it's non-empty. We know that there's two values that we added. The weight was the first value. The second was the actual node itself. So we're going to say heap Q dot heap pop from our min heap. This is basically how you do it in Python. It's pretty easy in Python. That's what I like. And like I said, we don't want to visit a node multiple times. So if we see that this node N1 is in visit, meaning it's already been visited, then we're just going to continue to the next iteration of the loop. We don't want to go through all of this node's neighbors if it's already been visited. Otherwise, what we're going to do is add it to visit so that we don't visit it again. And we're also going to update our result t so we're going to set it to the max of what it already is and the max of the weight that we just got the weight is remember the time it takes to reach this node so we're going to update that now we're going to do the breadth first search portion of it so we're going to go through all the neighbors of this node so the no the neighbor and the neighbor's weight so i'm just going to call that n2 and w2 because i'm bad at naming these so in edges basically neighbors of this n1 original node that we just popped from our min heap we're going to go through it and for all of the neighbors that haven't already been visited so if n2 is not in visit it's it has not been visited yet then we're going to add it to our min heap so heap q dot heap push onto our min heap is going to be this node n2 but remember the first value we're adding is the weight so weight 2 but remember this weight is just this weight 2 is just the weight that it takes for one edge but we want to keep track of the total uh, path length to reach this node so we're actually going to add that w1 the first weight to it as well so w1 plus w2 the total path that it takes to reach n2 i know that this algorithm is actually pretty complicated it's not a lot of code it's about 20 lines but it's actually you know it, it does take some practice to get used to it after you've written it a few times you do kind of understand the subtleties of it it's, it's pretty easy to go wrong with this algorithm but we've basically written the entire thing so now we can return t after this loop is done executing after the min heap is empty our t should give us the uh basically what it takes to reach every single node if it's possible right remember if it's possible and we know that it's possible basically we visited every single node if the length of visit is equal to our input value n which tells us the total number of nodes if we visited every node then we can return t remember the other condition was if we can't visit every single node we return negative one and that is the entire algorithm. Remember, the overall time complexity is big O, the total number of edges multiplied by log the total number of vertices. So this was a pretty long one. It was pretty difficult. I actually had a lot of bugs when I was writing my code for this video, and I hope that this came across pretty clear. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.